Hello all, this is the step-by-step -step setup of IBM DB2 11.5.7 HDR TS8. This particular tutorial is done on Reddit Enterprise Linux 8.5. What I'll cover in this particular tutorial is installation of DB2, creation of the instance, creation of the database, setting the HDR, and finally setting the TSA cluster. What I'll not cover in this particular tutorial is installation of the Reddit Enterprise Linux, installation of operating system is not covered in this particular tutorial. To start with, I will explain the document first, what we need to get our TSA cluster. And once I have explained everything, I will start with the actual lab. My environment looks something like this. So I will have, I have Reddit Enterprise Linux. I'll be installing DB2 11.5.7. The host names in my case is db1 and db2. The instance name that I'll create is dbp. The database name that I'll create is hadv. And this particular tutorial is recorded on VirtualBox 6.1.30. Make sure that the dbp is the name of the instance owner. Make sure same user exists on both the nodes. That is important. The networking is set up in such a way that I got one public IP per node, one private IP per node. The IP for the first node the public IP is 1.101, the private IP is 0.101. The here for the node 2, it's 102 and 0 0.102. The VIP is 1.100 and quorum is 1.1. The if I show you my IP, once we reach to the lab, I will show you the etc host file and I will show you the IP config as well. The nodes you should make sure that the nodes are able to communicate to each other. The first node is able to communicate to the second node. Second node is able to communicate to the first node. The, there is no firewall blocking between these two nodes. That's very important. Once we have verified our environment, we are going to install the DB2. I'm going to install DB2 11.5.7 Community Edition. We need to install the DB2 on both the nodes. So I will untar the software. Then I will check the prerequisites, whether the TSA MP prerequisites are all met. If they are all met, I'm going to install the TSA. Once the TSA is installed, I'm going to install the DB2 binaries using the DB2 install command. However, what one thing that we need to understand is like if this particular step I have mentioned as optional. So if we do not install the TSA here, then by default, the DB2 install is going to install it uh, for us. So we can safely skip the DB2 install SAM uh, step because anyway, the DB2 install is going to do it. So on one node, I will follow this and on another node, I will directly install the DB2 without installing the TSA first. You can also use the DB2 setup to install the DB2 software. You don't have to use the DB2 install. You can use the DB2 setup if required. Once the database is installed, we will verify the database is properly installed using the DB2 ls command. And then we will do the prep node on both the nodes. And we need to make sure that we do it on both the nodes. Once the database software is installed, we are going to create the instance using the db2 i create command minus u dbp dbp. My, in my case, the fence user and the instance owner is same in your production environment. You might want to have fence user different from the production uh, from the instance owner, but this is my lab, so this is fine. What we are going to set up the db2 hiq input file. We can run the db2 hiq in manual mode, but that you can make errors in that. So I prefer to use the the automated input file mode. So what we will be doing is like I'll copy the sample file, which is already shipped, which is present in home SQL lib samples HA XML. So from there, I will copy this particular file and we will modify that particular file as per our environment. And when once we modify that particular file, this particular file does not have the VIP. So we will add the VIP into that particular file. Once that is done, I will transfer this particular file to the standby and reverse the local host and remote host. This is the only change that I'm going to do once I transfer the file to the remote host. And then I'm, I'm going to, uh, then we, then we can do this setup. The, I have already mentioned that this particular file is in the instance home SQL lib samples HAXML. This is the file that I will be using and I'll show you how I edit that particular file. So you will see me live doing that particular setup. The next part is once all of this is done, we are going to set up our HDR. If you see the parameters, the HDR parameters that in my case, everything is in my, if, if you see, except the local host and remote host, all the other parameters are pretty similar. The local host on node one becomes the remote host on node two. The remote host on node two becomes the local host on node one. That's the only change that is there in this particular file in the HDR configuration. Otherwise, all the other parameters are kept same on both the nodes. 
this is the commands that I'll be running. This is the script that I'll be running. So I will create the archive lock location. I'll create the backup location. I will delete and if there are any old backups, then I will do the same thing on node two. I will set up the default DB path to this particular location. You can leave it as it is by default. I'll change the service name to 50K. I will change the TCP IP protocol, uh, the db2.com to TCP IP protocol. We will create the database. We will, once the database is created, we are going to convert the database from circular logging to archival logging. Then we are going to set the HADR parameters as per the table given above. Once the HADR parameters are set, we are going to take the backup. Once the backup is completed, we are going to send the backup to the node two. Once the backup is sent to the node two, then we can, when, then we are going to set the default DB path and service name as we did on the node one. Then we are going to restore the backup. Once the backup is restored, we are going to update the DB config. We are going to flip these two parameters. These are the only parameters that we will change. We will not change any other parameters. We will start the database, start the HADR on standby on the second node as standby. We will start the HADR on the first node as primary. And then we will using the db2pd command, we will verify the, the HADR status. Once the HADR is up and running, we are ready to create the cluster. So we, I'm going to use the db 2 hiq file. This is the file that we set up before. I'm going to use that particular file and we will run the file. First, we will set it up on the standby. Then we are going to do it on primary server and using the LSM command, we are going to verify the cluster. Then we are going to do the testing of the HA. I will not explain what testing we are going to do at this moment. Once we reach to this particular section, I will explain. So for now, we will ignore this particular section and let's start with our lab. So this is how, this is what my environment, it's a real, a real 8.5. I got DB1 and DB2 and this is my IP config. So let's go and turn on the both the machines. They are currently not up and running. They are currently in the shutdown shade. So I'll turn on both the machines and while the machines are getting turned on, I will pause the video and come back once they are fully on. Machines are completely on. As you can see, they have been powered on. So what we are going to do now is I will connect to the first node and I'll connect to the second node. So this is the sky blue color. I call it sky blue. You might want to call it something else. So why did this became big? I don't want it to become big. So this is the first node. This is the second node. I'll clear So DB1, DB2. I'll run the hostname CTL command on the first node, which will show us the host name. This is db1.db.com and it is running Reddit Enterprise Linux 8.5. And I'll run the same command on node 2 as well. And you can see that it is db2.db.com and it's also running 8.5. If I show you the IP config of both the nodes, I have config grep inet. You should be able to see that I got two IPs 0 0.101 for node 1, 1 1.101 for node 1. The 0 0.101 is the private IP, 1 1.101 is the public IP. If I run the same command on the second node, then the IP 0 0.102 is the private IP 1.102. The IP ending with 1 is for the node 1. IP ending with 2 is for the node 2. So we saw the IP configuration. That looks good. The cat etc host does not have the information about the public IP. Uh, private IP, sorry. It only contains the public IP. However, that should be fine. That is not a problem. So now that we got, we saw the IP configuration. I have already made sure that we are able to communicate to both the machines. So ping node one, DB2 from the node one that works. And the DB1, if I do the ping, that works. So both the machines are able to communicate to each other. I have already verified that. So that's all good. So we are, we have all our nodes set up. Now that we have our node set up, we are going to install the DB2. So first thing that we, I need to do is untar the software on both the nodes. So I'll do that thing. So I'll copy this command i'll start untarring on the first node so that's done and i'll do the same thing on node 2 so that's done the db2 software is getting untarred once the db2 software is getting uh, go, gone uh, it's untarred what i'll do is i will verify the prerequisites on both the nodes and once the prerequisites are met on first node i will install the tsa mp manually and on the second node i will not install the tsa mp i will directly install the db2 software so the database uh, untar is completed on okay so there is there is some problem okay that's good that's fine so i'll do 
this i will okay sometimes it copies twice so the prerequisites the all the prerequisites are met that's good news i'll run the command once again so I can, you can see all the prerequisites are met 8.5 and i'll run the same command here and you should be able to see all the prerequisites are met because okay and that's good on the first node i will as i mentioned i will install the tsa mp manually first before installing the database software i'm going to install it and i have to accept the license so i'm pressing the y button i'll press the y button and the tsa mp is is getting installed on the first node on the second node i will not install the the tsa mp manually first i will directly install the db2 software and what you should be able to see that the db2 software will uh, will install the tsa mp as well so i'm going to do that so that's done i have initiated the i've initiated the if you can see the db2 installation has been initiated on the second node without tsa and on the first node the tsa is installed first and once the tsa is installed we are going to install the db2 so let's wait for the tsa to the db2 installation has progressed here on the node 2 as you can see and on the node 1 the tsa is still getting installed and that's done no not at done it's applying the e-fixes so that's all done all packages were successfully installed so now good and we are going to install the db2 software so i'm installing the db2 software on node 1 now the installation of here is going to install the db2 install is going to install the tivoli samp on the first node it's not going to install the tivoli samp again because it's already been installed so it will skip that particular step and this particular installation takes up a bit time so it's 12 26 so i should be back if the installation will take maybe three to four minutes so i should be back by 12 30 or before that so let me pause the video and come back as you can see the db2 is installed on both the nodes the node one the execution completed successfully the node two execution completed successfully i said i'll be back by 12 30 however i came back at 12 29 so one minute i saved the we will verify that it is the developer edition using the db2 licm minus l so let me verify that particular thing so i'm running the db2 and you can see it's a db2 community edition 11.5 and if I do the same thing here as well, then you should be able to see that it is DB2 Community Edition 11.5. If I run the DB2 LS, you should be able to see that this particular software is 11.5.7. As you can see, 11.5.7 installed on May 2, which is today's date. And if I run the same here as well, if I run the same thing here, let me do this. And if I done the same, you can see it's 11.5.7 installed May 2. So we got the DB2 installed. So that once the DB2 is installed, now we are going to run the prep node command on both the nodes. So we need to make sure that we run it on both the nodes. So this is on the first node. And then I'm going to do the sec same thing from the second node. And that's done. So we have run this particular command. Now that the DB2 is installed we are ready to create the instance using db2 i create so i'm going to hit the db2 i create command on the first node and i'm going to do the same thing on second node so i've initiated the database the instance creation on the first node and second node so once the instance is created it's going to take some time so i'll pause the video and come back i should be back by 12 32 because the instance creation is 12 31 so by 12 32 within one minute i should be back I said I'll be back by 12.32, however, I came back at 12.31, so within few seconds, the instance is created on both the nodes. As you can see, the instance is created, so we are good. The instance is created on both the nodes, so that is also good news. Now, we are going to set up the DB2 HiQ file, so what we are going to do is we are going to log in as the instance owner because the, the DB2 HiQ command has to be run as the instance owner. So I'm going to log in as the instance owner and before doing something like that, I will show you db2 get instance. I'm in dbp and if I do the db2 level, then you should be able to see that this is running 11.5.7. If I do the same thing on node 1, it db2 get instance and the instance is running the 11.5.7. As I mentioned, if I show you ls minus l, I will not have any ha.xml file. You can see that I do not have any ha.xml file. What we are going to do is like we are going to copy this particular file. This particular file, sorry, the command got pasted twice. I'm going to clear the screen. The ha.xml, we are going to copy this particular 
instance home sql lib samples ha.xml it's a pre-shipped file this is the file that i'm going to copy once i have copied that particular file as you can see the file has i have copied that particular file i'll change the permission to 777 whatever you want to give so that's done and then i will i will edit that particular file so before to edit that file it makes my life easy if i open it in a notepad kind of thing so let me log in as the dbp user and i will edit the file here so g edit ha.xml the file is pretty big it has got lots of comments and it's self-explanatory however what i'll do i'll remove all the comments you, you can definitely read them and understand these comments once you read these particular comments you will be able to set them set the file as as your as per your environment it's pretty self-explanatory however i know all of this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete this and if i delete this you will be able to see you'll be able to see this in one single go so we have now successfully deleted the entries unwanted entries the command lines and now we have got this particular file in one go the we will now modify this particular file as per our requirements so db2 ha i'll change this to db2 ha the quorum i already mentioned here if you see the quorum that i gave is 192.168.1.1 so this is the quorum address so what i'll do is like i'll change it to 192.168 dot one dot one this is the quorum the public network so it says db2 public network i'll change it to public network instead of db2 public network i'll change it to the public network you can keep it as it is it's i'm just changing it so that i do not have db2 everywhere so you know it they are short so public network that's done i will change the private network to be also private network so i'm doing that I'm modifying this all the entries as per my needs. It's not mandatory that we have to use public network zero, public network with DB2 public network. We don't have to use it. So I'm changing that as well. Next thing is the host names. So my host name is DB1 and the second host name is DB2. Here also the host name is DB1 and here also the host name is DB2. The two nodes in my cluster is db1 and the second no node in my cluster is db2. My instance name that I have is dbp. The, the database name that I have is hadb, not hadrb, it's hadb. The local instance is dbp. The remote instance is dbp. The local host is, local host is db1 and remote host is db2 so this is how my file looks like so now i have modified the all the entries apart from the interface name and ip address so let's change that so if i do i have config you should be able to see i got 03 associated with 0 0.0101 and 0 s8 associated with 1.101 so let me copy this this is my private network so let me copy it here this is my private network change it on this because exactly same the interface name is exactly same on both the nodes it's s3 so i've changed it s3 and the ip address for the first node is 0 0.101 so let me let me go to the doc the ha.xml file so this is 101 and in this case it's 0 0.102 so let me change it to 0 0.102 the the subnet remains the same so i'm going to leave the subnet and now we will change the the public ip so the public ip interface is s8 so i'm going to change it to s8 i'm going to change it to s8 it's exactly matching s8 s8 and the ip address for the second node is 102 so for the second node it's 102 and for the first node it's 101 so we have modified our file so what i'll do is like i'll save it i'll close it and i'll clear this and we will verify that particular file from here so the db2 ha is our domain name the quorum ip is 1.1 the interface is s8 s8 1.101 1.102 255 subnet 255 subnet s3 s3 0 0.101 0 0.101 that's all good all good the two nodes are db1 db2 this is db1 db2 db1 db2 that's all good the db partition num 
the instance local member is 0 dbp the database name is hadb local instance is dbp remote instance is dbp local host is db1 and remote host is db2 so one thing that is not there in this particular file as i mentioned that this particular file does not contain the entry for this file doesn't contain the entry for virtual ip so i'm going to add that particular entry in the file so that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to add the entry for virtual ip in this particular file so that's that's done i will delete this entry so this is how the H virtual ip what i'll do is i will show you how that file looks like in the browser so let's open that particular file and as you can see this is how the file looks like so db2 ha the sh so 101 102 db1 db2 then we got so we got the physical network the first one is public network the second one is private network 0 0.101 so that is this is wrong this is this should not be 101 this should be 102 so see i reviewed the file and i got a mistake so let's correct this close tabs i'm going to close it i'm going to open the file again and i'm going to change 101 102 that looks good here this should be 102 so that's all done and now i'm going to open the file once again and i'll verify it so 101 102 db1 db2 that's the public ip looks good the private ip i had a mistake i corrected it 101 102 private network private network 33 db1 db1 and private network that's all good so that's all good the two nodes are db1 and db2 that's good the db partition num 0 dbp that's good the database name is hadb local instance dbp remote instance dbp local host db1 remote host db2 and the virtual ip is 1.100 in the say in the 255 again the network name that i changed i changed it to public network so i should change it here as well so that is another mistake and i will correct it straight away so i'm going to change this particular db2 public network to public network that's done. So we have successfully created the DB2 Haiku file. Now that we have created the DB2 Haiku file, the next step that I mentioned is we need to send this particular file to the node 2. So I'm going to do that. So I'm sending the file to node 2. So that's done. I will come to the node 2 and I will verify that we have received the file ha.xml. Right now we got this particular file. Only thing, only change that I'm going to do in this particular file, as I mentioned, is I'm going to flip the host names. That's the only change that I'm going to do. Rest all, there are there is no change required. So on this node, the local host becomes the local host becomes two, and the remote host becomes node one. So this is the only change that we need to do in this particular file here, and that's done. So I transfer the file and I modify that particular file. So that's good. We have set up the the db2 haiku file and that's good now we are going to set up the hadr as you see db i'm going to run this particular script so i'll show you what i'm going to do uh, this is the script that i'm going to run so so this is the script i have already explained to you so we are going to create the directories for log archive create the directory for backup if that is old backup remove it it should not be because i just created it but if that was old directory it will be there then I'm going to repeat the same steps on node 2. This is all good. Change the default DB part to DBD. This is not mandatory. Change the service name to 50K. Change the TCP IP DB2 communication to TCP IP. Create the database. So now we are creating the database. Then we are setting the archival logging, setting the HADR parameters. Then we are going to take the backup. We are going to transfer the backup using the SCP. We are going to update the DBM config on the node 2 similarly as we did for the node 1. We are going to restore the backup. We are going to flip only two parameters. This is the only two parameters that we are going to flip. We are, I'm going to start the HADR as standby. Start the HADR as primary on the first node and using the db2pd minus db command we are going to verify the HADR. So this is all that we are going to do. So let me do that. Let me create this particular script so hadr.sh so this is the script that i'm going to create so i'll save this so i've saved this particular file and then what i'll do is i will change the permission to the executable so plus x for hadr.sh i will verify here how that file looks like so this is the file that we are going to use to create the directories then update the dbm config create the database set hadr parameters take the backup transfer the backup 
Again, set the DBM config parameters for the remote node. Restore the database, update the DB config, activate the database, start the HDR, and then verify the HDR. Start the HDR as standby on second node, start the HDR as primary on the first node, and we are going to verify. So all good. So now we are ready to run this particular file. So let me run this particular file and watch this the database getting created so right now it's running this so db2 it's it is at this step where it's creating the database once the database is created it's going to the database creation is the only step which takes time rest all the restore and everything will be very quick so have patience the because if i pause the video you will not be able to see that the parameters are getting changed so that's why i'm not going to pause the video give it a minute so that's all done the database got created successfully all the parameters got updated successfully the database is deactivated i have taken the backup the backup has been transferred using the scp you can see the backup has been transferred the now this the update dbm config on the second node the db2 start on the second node that's done now it's actually restoring the database the restore database completed successfully is changing those two parameters that's all done started hdr as standby that's done start hdr as primary that's done and then it's going to give us the output of db2 pd which says primary peer sync so the hdr is set up this is good news the next part is the the once the hdr is set up the next part is creating the cluster so the file that we created the ha.xml file that we created the db2 haiku file we i'm going to use that first i'm going to create the cluster on second node then i'm going to run the db2 haiku on the first node it will not create the cluster domain again it will identify that the cluster already exists however this is required that because the member for the standby will not be added so we will run this here we will run it again and using the lsm we will verify the output so that's i'm going to do that so what i'll do is i will take this so these are the steps i'm going to create the again i'm going to create a executable vi cluster or i'm going to say tsa.sh and i'm going to enter those commands and i'm going to save it and as you can see here first checks whether the hadb is all good then it sets the db2 creates the cluster on standby it creates the cluster on primary and using the lsm it's going to verify that the cluster is all up and running so that's all good i will change the permission of this particular file to executable so that's all done and i'm going to run the tsa.sh command on the so primary peer connected the db2 hiq the this particular command is at as of now running if i run lsrp domain you should be able to see that there are no domains okay the domain already came so the db2 ha already the db2 hiq command created the domain which is good so that's good news and if i run the lsm command you can see that i'm still not getting the output which means the the resources are not at defined the script is going to add the resources so give it a minute the interface the network first it will add the interface network interface then it's going to add the instance etc so that's the the it was pending online now it has come online and now if i run the lsm still the resources are not at created give it a minute for the resources to get created and once the resources are created is going to so i'll what i'll do is like the time in my watch is 12 47 i'll pause the video because this is going to take some time so i'll pause the video and come back once all of this is done so it's almost done it has done it on the first node and you can see the database is determined valid however it cannot be added because it's this was the standby node so it did not add the database on the second node on the first node it did not add these ips because it was already done it's now adding the database to the domain and then once the database is added to the domain it's going to create the virtual ip so before it creates the virtual ip let's let me do something let me connect quickly and let's see i have config grep inet i should be able to see only two ips one 0 0.101 1 1.101 and on the second node also i should be able to see only two ips the 0 0.102 1 1.102 on the first node because the first node is going to become the primary you will see another ip appearing which is the virtual ip that will get created so give it a minute and that's all done the all the cluster configuration have been completed successfully and the 
IP, it has created the IPs. However, by the time the LSM ran, it was not up and running. So let's run the LSM command once more and see if the IP, IP has come online, which is good news. So here the, you will not see an extra IP. You still see there are two IPs, the public IP and private IP. However, on this particular node, you should be able to see that there are three IPs. The another IP is 1.1. 100 so this is the virtual ip this virtual ip will be there wherever the the active database is there if i go to the instance and if i run the db2 pd minus db at the database name which is hadb minus hadr grep hadr role then you should be able to see that we this particular instance is primary which means the 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 vip is along with the primary so that is good so now we have successfully configured our cluster which is good news the lsm output will show you that everything is all good the ip is offline on node 2 because it is online on node 1 and the database the primary is on node 1 that's why it is offline on node 2 and it is primary on the first node which is good also we have got we got the database up and running we got the hadr up and running we got our cluster up and running now what we are going to do is we are going to do some kind of testing that I mentioned before. So there are multiple scenarios that we can test. One test scenario that I will test is I will not test all of the scenarios. They are going to work. So only one scenario that I'll test now is what if I kill the primary instance? So what if I kill this particular instance? So PS minus EF grep db2cc and this instance i'm going to kill so kill minus nine i'm going to kill this if i run the ps minus ef you can see it's not there and now if i run the db2 pd minus hadb hadr i'm not getting any output because the database is not activated now if i come to this and if i run the lsm command you should be able to see it's pending online which means it is it is trying to bring it up so give it a minute for it to come online so let's verify that whether it came and you can see with a different process the instance automatically came online and let's see whether the database came online if it came online we'll get the output of db2 pd and you see hdr role primary so when we killed the instance instance automatically started the tsa did that particular magic so we there are we can i can test all of these scenarios however it's not required one scenario that i will test one more is the the vip and what i'll also do is i will switch off the primary so that is something that i will do so let's let me connect to my this is my windows machine so i'm going to connect to the windows machine so i've launched the you can see c drive program file so i've launched the windows machine and let's see if i have got any any directory any catalog entries if i have i'm going to uncatalog them so i'm going to uncatalog this and sorry uncatalog db db name is hadb and uncatalog node which is bip i'm going to do that and then i'm going to do the terminate refresh it cls clean the screen so what i'll do is I will create the two catalog entries in front of you guys pointing to the web so you can see i do not have the node directory i do not have the db directory the web that i have is 192.168.1.100 that's the web and the port that i have using is 50k and i'll catalog the database hadb at this particular web so this is the these are the commands that i'm going to run all together so let's do that and that's done now if i run this particular commands i should see the db2 node and database directory so you can see the vip is pointing to 100 this is the node and the database is cataloged at the vip node so this is all good so now what we are going to do is we are going to do the testing so first thing i will connect to the database and i will verify where is my database so i'll run all of these commands all together so I connected, you can see the current server is HADB, is active on db1.db.com and the OS is Linux. This is my Windows box. You can see this is my Windows box and I have connected successfully. And if I run the, if I run the db2 list applications command here, then you should be able to see 
that there is one connection coming from 192.168.1.6 this is the ip of my windows box i can show it to you so if i run ip config find str ip v4 you can see that the ip address of my windows machine is 192.168.1.6 which is here and if I, when I ran this particular queries, I can see the primary is on DB1. So HADB, the role is primary, it's in the peer state. And what time it got connected, look, what time it got connected, the local host is DB1, which is primary and remote host is DB2, which is standby. Now the, the test that I'm going to do is automatic failover. To do the automatic failover, I'm going to do something like this. So I'm going to do one thing. So let me, let me, kill the let me sorry so before killing i'll show you that this is my primary okay so clear db2 pd minus db hadb minus hadr grep hadr roll and this is my primary i'm going to shut down this node i'm going to force shut down this node so sudo shut down minus h now before shutting down i will Show you how the lsm looks like so this is the output of lsm the the node one is online node two is offline for the database the node one has got the whip the node two does not have the whip and i will run one more command on node two i'll open one more session so you can see i have config grep inet you can see there are only okay this is node one so sh to db2 i'll go to the node 2 and i'll run this command so you can see there are only two ips 102 0 0.102 and 1.102 and the database status if i run this particular command the database status is db2 pd minus db hadb minus hadr grep hadr role it's it's standby i'm going to I'm going to force shut down the primary. I'm going to force shut down the primary and let's see what the TSA does for us. So I'm going to do that. So that's done. Remote side uh, closed and the DB1 is now, it's actually getting restarted. Let's, okay, it's okay. So when I try to shut down the machine, what it happened is like it's booting rather than getting shut down is rather than booting itself. And that is also done by the TSA. So that, that is something that I mentioned here that when you try to shut down, when you try to shut down the primary TSA will automatically restart the server. If I would have just powered it off, remove the plugs, then probably it will not restart. But what I did is I initiated the shutdown. So the machines it's restarted and it's already restarted. However, that's what we are going to do is we are the machine one is already restarted. You should see that the DB2 is not up and running on the second node, the old primary because it just got restarted. However, I'm not interested in this machine. I am interested in the node two, which was our old standby. So let's, I closed it. Okay. Why did I close it? Yeah. Uh oh, fish. Okay. Let's quickly go to node two and let's see whether the switch over has happened. I don't want it to go down. Let's see. DB2 PD minus DB HADB minus HADR. Uh, why did I close it? Why did I close it? That's ah, still standby. That's good. And I have config. I have config grep inet. Okay. And you can see it's still the, it's the whip is still pointing to the, is the whip has still not come online. So the switch over has not happened as of now. So let's wait. The, the old primary was node one. It's inactive because I have shut down that particular session. This and let's let me connect to this another server, another system so that and we will check what is the status of LSM and we should be able to see what what the TSA should do in case the primary goes down is it should automatically do the failover. So this particular node, this particular node should become the primary and the whip should come here. That's what I'm expecting to happen. So give it a minute. Uh, let's see what exactly happens. The LSM output. So failed offline, failed offline. So member is pending online. So let's give it a minute and find out what exactly happens with our second node. So pending online, still the same status is not coming online. Give it a minute and figure it out. 
whether the second node comes online give it a minute it should come online and you can see it says pending online so the database is trying to come online the whip already came online which is good the database is coming online which is good and the second node is still the first node which is old primary is failed offline and this the database came online on the second node the the instance the ip came online on the second node so now i'll go here and this is our test so now if i run db2 pd command hadr role here it was standby let's see and it got converted as a primary which is good news and now if i run the if config grab inet you can see i had only two ips the virtual ip automatically appeared on the node 2 which is also good news now i will come here and if i run the select query now it should fail because the connection got broken because there was a failover now what i'll do is like i'll not clear the screen i'll connect once again so i've connected and then what i will do is i will run this particular queries the this particular query i will run and if you see the primary is in the disconnected state and the 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 in, in initially the local host the primary was on db1 now the primary is on db2 i'll show you it once again i cannot okay i can make it bigger so the local host was db1 the here the local host is db2 it was primary peer because i shut down db1 the it is primarily disconnected however the tsa has already restarted it so i'm waiting i'm waiting for it to come online so that's all good so now if i run the same query then i should be able to see that the from the primary disconnected it got into primary peer the it's at 101 it at 101 it got reconnected so that's all good so the pair so when the primary was shut down the the switch over happened the old standby became the new primary and the when the the old primary came online it automatically became the standby so this is the power of tsa this we saw how to set up the tsa step by step you in 11.5.7 on red hat enterprise linux 8.5 this particular setup was done live. I have installed the DB2. I created the instance. I created the database. I set up the HADR. I set up the TSA. So everything was done in this particular tutorial. And we also configured the VIP and we tested the VIP as well. And we saw that VIP is failing over to another node. The switch, the automatic failover is happening. So we did that kind of testing. I hope this particular tutorial was useful. I hope you will be able to set up the TSA in your environment. After watching this particular tutorial, if you like my channel, if you like my content, press the like button and do subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. Bye bye.